Hello and welcome to Hornbill TV's Prime at 9. I'm Muammar Lai, now news in detail. Nagaland Chief Minister Nipirio, also the patron of the Nagaland Bharat Scots and Guides, inaugurated a building of the organization today in Koima. Speaking at the inaugural program, Nipirio said that the Jubilee building is a testimony of the hard work, dedication and service rendered by NSBSG members, past and present. He urged all to continue the good work for the people. He also said youths are the backbone of the society, therefore urged them to propagate peace and harmony. It doesn't come into the best use. And <clears throat> there are a lot of issues and misunderstanding. But as per the report, the construction committee in charge had mentioned he had overspent a little bit and there is no complaint and so it's a good sign that he is the right person to be the convener of the construction committee though it took quite some time i think the building has come up very magnificently and has a quality control and so, I extend my heartiest congratulations to the Bharat Scout and Guides members in, uh, in memory of Golden Jubilee. This building is constructed. It is a part of the government organization and it is a bonded duty for the state government to extend help and the government grant which came in and also contributions from the members and well-wishers. Addressing the gathering, the advisor for youth resources and sports, Zalenika informed that the Bharat Scots and Guides in Nagaland was formed in 1967. He said there are currently more than 3,000 Scots and Guides and 400 plus unit leaders and officials in the seat. This will not only provide better privilege to the staff and leaders of the Bharat Scout and Guides, but to all the Scouts and Guides bodies who have been, who have taken the oath to protect and serve the state and the nation. 3,000 plus scouts and guides are currently enrolled as members. With over 400 plus unit leaders and officials spread over the various districts in Nagaland, it is my hope that more students and the young allies will take interest and join as members in the family of scouts and guides. The Bharat Scout and Guides was first formed in the year 1967 in Nagaland and the NSBGS is doing an exceptional job in continually producing Rajya Parastar Scouts and Guides who are able to bring meritorious awards such as President's Scout and Guides Awards to the state. A press conference was conducted today at the Old DC Bonglo in Koima by Minister for Planning and Coordination Nibar Kronu and Advisor for New and Renewable Energy Molomokikon. Addressing the media in regard to the allegations said to have been met by the Nagaland Pradesh Congress Committee, claiming seat sharing arrangement between the Nationalist Democratic Progressive Party and the Bharti Janata Party and the planned merger of the parties. Kronu clarified that both the parties have different principles. On the allegations that the NDPP is going to PJP after the election, he said it is just an allegation by the NPCC. Kronu clarified that in the independent speech, it is clearly written that the Naga people have been waiting patiently for an early solution to the Naga political issue and the people want an early, inclusive and honourable, acceptable solution, Kronu said. The 
but I just want to clarify some of the allegations that has been uh, has alleged by NPCCR. President Ketere and former Chief Minister Kiel Chishi that the uh, UDA government is mis misleading the Natas. And the allegation that uh, the NDPP is going to merge with BJP after this uh, election. All these uh, figments of imaginations by the Congress Party is we feel that uh, we should clarify to our people. Like, the message has already gone to Delhi. Mm -hmm. It's very clear by all the agencies. They have taken it to Delhi. They know very well. But we keep on waiting. But uh, there was uh, no reply from government of India. And nor this side uh, also. They, uh, they could not uh, keep in touch. So I say, the parties, be it NDPP or BJP, it is a party affairs. So they have to go ahead. In case if there is no solution, they have to prepare a groundwork. So that is what the, that is why it was done. But our role as a facilitator, that. Monomokikon, national spokesperson of the PJP, also said that in 2018 the NDPP and the PJP turned into pre poll alliance and contested the election together. After having won the election and forming the government, they continued the alliance. Both the parties have maintained their own identities and remain as they are and it will continue, it was informed. He can also see that their relationship has grown and become stronger now and it will continue even in the days to come. Of the, uh, you know, persons, uh engagement on uh, with another issue he is not conversant he is new therefore uh, he is making such statement because uh, to assume that we are blocking or the uh, chief minister is blocking or delaying the solution is to uh, also st state that uh, they have uh, a solution to that uh, aspect i will just comment on the statement made by congress uh, president uh, K. There G. in Nagaleka in the paper and also in the video which came out. Um, he says that uh, present government has to step down for a solution to us. By the opposition has already been clarified by the state pres BJP president. It is uh, also very clear that in 2020, 2018, the NDPP and BJP entered into a pre poll alliance and uh, contested the election together. And after having won the elections and formed the government, we continued as alliance. And uh, to reiterate uh, our alliance, we have also again uh, entered into the same formula for the next link. Very committed on all issues, whether it is the Naga issue or other development issues in the state of Nagaland. When uh, the former Prime Minister Atal Bihari Vajpayee visited Nagaland in 2003 October. Uh, he had given a peace dividend by granting rupees 365 crore to Nagaland for clearing the outstanding liabilities. At that point of time, the Finance Minister of Nagaland was Kate. So we also know that having that experience today, uh, leveling allegation against the uh, Prime Minister on his sincerity towards this issue is uh, just a diversionary tactics. Union Defence Minister Rashna Singh visited the headquarters of the Inspector General Assam Rifles at Mantri Pukri in Manipur today and interacted with troops of the Red Shield Division and Assam Rifles. He was accompanied by the Chief of Army Staff General Manoj Pandey, GOC in C. Eastern Command Lieutenant General R.P. Kalita and GOC Spare 
Corps and Lieutenant General R. C. Tiwari along with other senior officers of the Army and the Assam Rifles. <laughs> During the visit, the Defence Minister was briefed about the counter-insurgency as well as border management operations on Indo-Myanmar border to maintain peace and tranquility in the region. Addressing the personnel, Singh appreciated the officers and soldiers for performing their duty with courage and conviction and with challenges posed by terrain and weather and improving the security situation in Manipur. Defence Minister commended the role of the Assam Rifles during the past seven decades and the immense contribution in internal security, securing Indo-Myanmar border and playing a key role in bringing notice into the national mainstream. For this reason, they are called the friends of the notice people and sentinels of notice, he stated. The HNYF Northern Region under Reboy District today sent a strong message to the state government to listen the, to the voice of the local people in the second phase of border settlement between Meghalaya and Assam and to not take the decision blindly without the consent of the people. Speaking to the media person today at Ngongpo, HNYF Northern Region's President Marcus Martin see that the HNYF has strongly sent the message to the state government that in this upcoming border settlement, which is the second phase of border settlement, it should not take the decision without the consultation from the traditional heads and local people, especially in the block 2, and that even one inch of land should not be included in Assam. In the previous border settlement, many of Meghalaya land was included and parted to Assam as the people residing in that border area are mostly from Assam and they are in favor of Assam rather than to be settled in Meghalaya, said Marcus Martin. He added that this time the government should be aware before taking any final decision and without the consent of local people and the traditional head, they should not sign the MOU blindly as being signed is in just the recent border settlement. Along with the rest of the country, Nagaland observed the second edition of the World Photography Day at DKFN Kohima with Director, Tourism Department, Kedose Umeta, inaugurating the photography competition. The event was organized by the Photography Club Kohima, where about 80 to 90 photography were showcased during the competition exhibition. Rajkumar Joy Shankar, Joy Shankar Singh Photography was a judge as the winner while Vilemeo Kotsu and Likao Kingen, Kingen were placed in second and third respectively at Peleviso Miyase and Peleviso Miyase won the People's Choice Award.
Audition for Mr. and Miss Notice Nagaland was held yesterday at Hotel Jafu in Kohima. Five male and five female contestants have been shortlisted to participate in the Mr. and Miss India Notice Zonal event, which has been scheduled for September 30 in Goa, Diasa. The audition was conducted by the Society for Promotion of Oriental Arts and Aesthetics. The winners will represent the state for Mr. India International and Miss India Global 2023. Irrespective of wherever that you were, you are coming from, I want to thank on behalf of SPOA, SPOA, the Society for Promotion of... Centenary celebration of Don Bosco concluded today at Don Bosco High Secondary School Woka. The grand final. Finale celebration was held with advisor of Department for of Law and Justice, Dr. Chumben Muri, as the chief guest and Deputy Commissioner Waka Ajit Kumaranjan as the guest of honor. Muri, in his address, urged the students to continue promoting one's own culture and tradition. Muri mentioned that through the tremendous efforts of the pioneers of Don Bosco, many people have lived their dreams. Also speaking at the event, Deputy Commissioner Waka Ajit Kumar Ranjan exhorted the students to be grateful to the pioneers who took the mission despite hardships and challenges. Ranjan urged the gathering to cultivate independence and entrepreneurship mindset, citing that Waka being the land of plenty. During the week-long centenary celebration, the program also witnessed cultural show, dance, weaving, knitting, storytelling, among others. I would like uh, to urge you to continue with the effort. As a past pupil of uh, this school, I'm really happy to be here with you today as the chief guests during the celebration of the centenary event of coming of Don Bosco establishment to this part of the world. I remember Pompey, Father Anthony, Father Michael, Father Devisia, and I also fondly remember, though I am from a Baptist background, the most prized possession I had during that time was the Rosary Place by the Father. I would also like uh, to remember, particularly Master Lawrence, he taught us so many tricks that were extracurricular and maybe those teachings out of the classroom contributed to what we are today. In the perpetrated attack by the proscribed Biswa Mohan faction of the Nationalist Liberation Front of Tripuras and LFT, one BSF personnel has been killed in an attack in North Tripura near the Simnapur border area under the remote Kantlang border outpost along the tri-junction border of Tripura, Mizoram and Bangladesh. The deceased has been identified as Head Constable Grijesh Kumar Uday, who hails from Mantla district of Madhya Pradesh. Sources inform that the BSF Trooper Uday 53 Havildar in the 145 battalion BSF succumbed to his injuries at Agatala Best ILS Hospital on Friday soon after he was admitted to the hospital. Superintendent of Police, North Tripura District, Kiran Kumar, stated that Uday sustained four bullet injuries after militants opened fire 
at the patrolling border guards at around 8.30 a.m. on Friday and a shotgun battle took place. Coming operations are underway to trace the militants. This is all for now. Keep watching on Bill TV.